Mm, cool. Well, we've got two interviews for you today. First up, we've got an interview with someone whose work you've almost certainly come across, even if you might not know his name. Rob Moody, aka Robolinda2, is responsible for what is perhaps cricket's most remarkable archive of video footage on the internet. And he's kept literally millions of cricket fans entertained throughout lockdown. Rob, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Just in case, list, if somehow if listeners aren't aware of your work, you have a YouTube channel with 700,000 subscribers that post footage from cricket matches from all over the world from the past. Um, first up, why do you do it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever known. <laughs> I, it's bizarre that it's even gone on for this long. I mean, when I uploaded the first video back in 2009 or something, you couldn't predict that 2020 would even exist, let alone the channel would still be going, you know, a decade and a bit later, but it has. So I'll just keep going until it gets shut down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but you don't make a penny from this as well. So this is pure altruism. Yeah, no, no profit whatsoever. Um, it's not possible anyway. But uh, yeah, no, no money made from it. There's uh, far more moral ways to make money than the videos on, on YouTube with footage I don't own. <laughs> I think, uh, firstly, this is almost one of the most excited I've been to to interview someone, like more than a lot of pro cricketers. It is like, like well, it's almost, I mean, what got or at least kept a lot of us, I think, interested in cricket to an extent. I mean, through our teenage years when, you know, you don't have a Sky subscription, it is like a, a really valuable way. And I think that uh, what what is tough to get across is just the the sort of how small, or not, not small, but like how niche a lot of the, videos are you know like it's a it's it's videos what was the one from the county game the other day the, the, from the one that Vish posted it, teaching a hunter order England versus Kent there was was one like I didn't well, even, yeah. I didn't even know that game existed and you you're posting it was a remarkable uh, minute video actually it was you had a one-handed national stain stunner uh Ed Smith was a batsman Andrew Simons was playing that game as well and then Rob Key got out uh for a, for a 52 ball 11 <laughs> And got berated off the deal basically by Bob Willis on on uh, on commentary, all all in all in two minutes. And there, there was also, uh, I think, Batuja Nandaraji, right, for the Independent, uh, said that he could remember, I think, he called it a Hall of Fame left arm wrist spinner googly, followed by a part timer in like a the precursor of the One Day Cup in England, so <laughs> the county game. And you you've chimed in in about half an hour saying like I actually have that footage. And, uh, and I didn't even know. I mean, people ask me for stuff and I'm thinking, I can't do that. Are you nuts? Like, why would I have this random delivery from a county match? I'm in Australia. How would I even have that footage? And so I had to search the archive and I'm like, huh, I think I might have that. And then I look at it. And I'm like, I don't even know how I got it. Don't know when I got it, but I got it. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, I don't even know half the stuff I've got because you just tape everything whenever it comes on for the last 30 something years. You haven't watched every ball of everything and uh, you don't remember every ball of every match. So it's actually really fun when people out there on social media, they've got their own little memories, you know, from all these matches. And that's what's really cool that people do remember different things when they watch the same match, you know? And uh, so yeah, it's really fun to go and find the footage and it's even exciting for me if I've got it. I impress myself. And then it's, yeah, great to chuck it up to everyone to see because, uh, you know, highlights on the internet are generally just the same old stuff, you know? And heaps of the cool little things that people, you know, recall from 20 years ago, then they didn't make it into the highlights of that test or one day it'll be something random that you only will see if you watch the full game and if you taped it that's the only way that it would be able to be seen 20 years later so that's what's really cool it just just makes me happy that i took the time and effort to record the full matches when i could 
rather than just the 20 minute highlights, which you miss out so, so many niche little cool things, which is predominantly what I've uploaded over the years. So how, um, how much have you recorded? <laughs> I get asked this a lot, but it's a lot. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, uh, um, uh, there's a lot, you know. Of, <laughs> I mean, everyone, everyone knows the numbers. I mean, I've said them over the years. I mean, I've got about 30,000 DVDs. It's about 120 terabytes of footage. Probably more. I, don't know. I haven't actually counted up all, all the hard drives because they just they just increase all the time. And then I've got a few hundred tapes still from the eighties or or nineties. Um, but yeah, it keeps growing. There's there's a, a Twitter interaction that I saw you have today that I think maybe sums up possibly a, a certain aspect. So you uh, you tweeted spent the last few days watching Brian Lara's four hundred out ball by ball. Time well spent. Uh, Love my archive. Then the heart eyes emoji. Someone replies saying, "Like last from punishment. One of the, one of the most boring innings ever. A dreadful game of cricket." And then you, yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't exciting for most of it. I mean, when you're watching any innings, I mean, we've all watched an innings that gets to a hundred to two hundred, but then it there's a certain point in that innings. Because not every innings gets to 200 even. So when something gets to about 220, 230, and it's still got lots of time left, at some point, your mind goes to it, the commentators go to it. You could cook it to 300 today. So there's a certain point in the commentary and everything that it's like, he might get to 400. And when beyond earth do you think about that when you're watching cricket? So that's what was really cool when the discussion in the commentary and the whole vibe of the match the match was secondary all of a sudden it's like i think some you know the guy's gonna bat and try and get to 400 and that's just never a situation in the game that you ever come across <laughs> um and that's really cool you know i mean we've seen you know guys like mark taylor get 334 and clark get the big 329 warner got the 335 they all could have gone on to 400 they just declared early to make a game of it I mean, Mark Taylor could have batted for seven days on that pitch uh, in '98. Um, so yeah, it was interesting just to 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 witness the build up to you know breaking the the Hayden 380, and then it's like once I got to that point, it's like all right, if you've got the 360, you're going to the 400 if you can. <laughs> Why on earth would you stop then? So yeah, the bars around the ground, the excitement. So while in the end, the innings was. I say useless, but you know, drawn match, flat Antigua wicket as always. Um, yeah, and it's not like everyone around the place is watching Lara's innings in full all these years later. So I thought, what a cool thing to do, you know, to watch the whole thing from the start what, to finish. So, yeah. What scares me a little bit is just the thought of how much cricket you've watched and how much time you spent watching it. So the other day we tweeted out something on Anthony McGraw keeping wicket for England at Lords. And someone replied yeah. tagging you, saying, oh, Rob Belinda too, have you got the footage of this? And you replied quite quickly, saying, yeah, yeah, um, Stuart was off the field, got hit on the head by a Giles delivery. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so, like, how, how many, like, whole days <laughs> of cricket have you just watched that haven't uh, led you to posting anything? Um, and, and also, like, what does your family think about all this? Well, uh, I don't know. It's all surreal for me. I mean, for me, I don't even think about it. I mean, it's, you know, I do have a life. <laughs> People just assume I'm some crazy cricket guy, but it just comes across like that. <laughs> uh, my family, uh, well, I mean, my kids are 13 and 11. I mean, they've basically grown up with YouTube, you know. Um, and they've all got their own little channels, you know. But kids always do, you know, posting up dumb stuff. If it's not to YouTube, it's to TikTok or something. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so I, I, I'm the only one of the dads of, of all the my kids' friends that actually has a, a, a channel that gets views. So, you know, they, they all think that my son's lying. He says, oh, my, my dad's got 700 million views. And they're like, no, he doesn't because <laughs> you know kids lie and brag about stuff and exaggerate at school <laughs> so that that's pretty funny that uh, you know 
uh, yeah, no one says anything about any other aspect of my life. It's just the fact that I've got this YouTube channel. So yeah, for me, it's just weird because I don't even think about it. It's, yeah, it's, so it, it, that might be weird to say, but yeah. When, when, when Yan said this is scary, it reminds me that what, what scares me sometimes is just the thought of all of this being lost, basically. Not in terms of, presumably you keep the archive safe, but in terms of uh, how, I guess, the, the boards who technically own these rights, even though they don't, they don't even feel, uh, feel about it. And was, am I right in thinking that at the start of lockdown, when the IC launched their, the vault, that it sort of came pretty yeah. close kind of all, all crashing down then what's i guess what's the closest it's come and how how secure do you feel it is kind of right now oh it's it's literally teetering on the edge of complete obliteration all the time <laughs> it uh, it's a miracle it's still it's still up you know i mean i've tried really hard to stay within the guidelines of you know whoever knows even what they are but uh, the goalposts keep moving, as they say, you know, where one day I think I'm safe to upload something, next thing you know, no, 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 you can't do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's frustrating, but uh, it's always come close to being terminated. I mean, whenever I've got two copyright strikes, then I'm, I'm only one away. And anyone that's had a YouTube channel for any length of time, when you get those copyright strikes, you just think, oh, well, it's gone now, you know. But, anyone can can uh, have their channel taken down so yeah i mean i early on it annoyed me and i thought oh man that's really disappointing but now it's completely inevitable <laughs> death taxes in the end of my channel it's going to happen at some point <laughs> um so all i can do is keep clearing out the videos that whatever copyright holder says are infringing and just keep it up as as long as i can but you know it's easy to download someone's channel now so and i've done it about 10 times so um it's not like it'll actually be lost what will be lost is the continuous you know uploads of random stuff that are that i've still got sitting there there's yet to upload i mean i've, I've got a folder which is about i don't know uh, probably about two or three terabytes of just random small things that I've just found over the years. They all just go in this folder and I just put them up, you know, over the last 10 years. Whenever I find something cool in a match or an interesting thing, I chuck it in the folder. And then when I feel like uploading something, I just pick something random and throw it up. So there's so much there that, that still people haven't seen. It's thousands of videos still. Um, so they yeah, just have to keep uh, being a good boy and uh, not uploading anything bad otherwise I've, I've, mr icc gets angry <laughs> if, other than copyright strikes have they ever got in touch or cricket australia ever just ever directly got in touch with you yeah i've had uh, i've had pretty awesome communication over the years um with the uh, you know various boards uh there's always, there's always someone that gets in touch um and uh, it's still a bit of a grey area exactly who owns the rights to any footage. I mean, the, uh, but, you know, the ICC obviously have a clear ownership of any ICC events, and that's been made very clear to me. <laughs> and that's fine. I mean, you know, if I have to steer clear of ICC events, that's fine. I've got enough footage that I don't need to go searching uh, that stuff um but uh yeah it's it's frustrating that you know rights change too the ownership changes over the years you know i mean who who whoever owned 1985 ashes do they still own it now does bbc own it does sky own it does the ecb own it does the icc own it i have no idea so it just it seems to change all the time same for cricket in australia in the 80s I, I assuming Cricket Australia own it all, but they didn't back then. Um, so, yeah, it's it's confusing, but yeah, I'm not really sure. Is, is there much that you uh, are there ever requests you get that you think no, I can't sort of can't be bothered with that one, or will you do you try and fulfil all of them? Um, I reckon every day I would say I would love to, you know. Uh, but yeah, some uploads are just an 
absolute suicide mission. I think I replied to someone the other day. I think I, would, I may as well waterboard myself and then upload some I, some IPL to my YouTube channel. It would just be <laughs> complete suicide, absolute suicide. Um, <laughs> obviously, the actual archive is brilliant, but I'm a massive fan of the titles of some of the videos. Yeah. So got a few 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 of the best ones here so india <laughs> i mean some, some of the polite ones i'll say as well uh oh. in, yeah. in india hilarious <laughs> then only have themselves to blame 23 funniest inzerman run out prepare to laugh your ass off how not to play <laughs> yeah. pace bowling poor england suffer again 152.4 reasons to shit yourself brett lee's lightning warning to swear back to does a lot of time go into these titles or is first thing that comes into your head uh no well what's funny is people give me credit for all these titles but uh it's been an evolution over time there there's been a lot of youtube cricket channels being taken down since i started there was a couple really early on around 2011 there was one guy in particular that just had the most awesome video titles i can't remember what they were or who he was but at the time i'm like oh what a great title for a video like completely taking the piss and i thought uh, that'd be really cool so i started doing it for a few and that was the moment that the channel the videos started going nuts videos that had like 20 views i just made up some funny title really just to have fun next thing you know it's got two million views the next week and i thought well that worked how far can I push that? <laughs> and people would make comments going, oh, you know, this video you've got, change it to this. So people would send me messages all the time with titles that they want to see on the video. So I didn't even come up with half of them. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, have fun, play with fire a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you were... Uh... Go on, man. Oh, I've, I've just seen the campaigns sort of growing to get you uh, to somehow put you forward for, for an order of Australia. Is that right? Uh, is, that, is that something you, you can see happening? Or do you think that's uh, people getting a bit ahead of themselves? Uh, yes, <laughs> definitely people are getting ahead of themselves. Well, that sort of thing has been going on for years. It always happens at some point in the year. Um, I, I got a fake one from the... Uh, Batuta advocate and everyone thought it was real uh, and the actual uh, uh, press thing they put out looks completely legit but it's completely it's just a send up and yeah I posted it to Facebook but all my physical real friends were all just like congratulations that's amazing and all sorts of stuff and I'm like what are you, are you stupid like it's it's fake do you know what this site is it's a satirical site it's just funny so yeah people yeah it's uh yeah it's i cannot see a <laughs> any situation where that would actually eventuate it would probably uh lessen <laughs> the uh yeah the appeal of the uh, order of australia and its standing as a actual title <laughs> Are you aware of um, the influence you've had on other people in the YouTube cricket community? So the, the emergence of uh, Desi Robolinda, who basically does what you do, but for Indian videos. Um, have, you, have you seen that guy? Yeah, of course. He, he, he's a mate. We've been uh, friends for a few years. Um, uh, and uh, that's... I, he asked me if, if he could do it, you know, in the end, he said, oh, can I change my Twitter handle to this? And I said, yeah, go for it, you know, there's uh, no problem there. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's pretty funny and yeah, it's flattering. Yeah, so it's, like, it's the start of a new brand, the, the Robolinda <laughs> brand, international cricket brand. Um, recently, you, you, you gained, uh, or you, you created a bit of a, a, a Twitter storm. So you posted, an amazing video of all the 104 runouts Steve Waugh was involved in throughout his 19-year-long uh, international career. Um, and that, and that, that started something. Do you want to explain that? 
Yeah, well, that was just that was just something that you can't predict, you know. I mean, uh, well, it started when Crick Info posted the the tweet that showed he was involved in the most runouts in cricket history, which I instantly was triggered because I love Steve War, and I thought, "Are you kidding? Like someone's made this up." Uh, it's got to be Inzaman, surely. Surely, it has to be. Um, and uh, I argued for a bit, and I thought, the only way we're going to know is if someone puts up a, a video of all the run And even as I was thinking those words, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, someone. So I thought, yeah, it's going to be me. <laughs> and I thought, I just need to, if I had that video, that would be really awesome because I was pretty sure he wasn't uh, responsible for running out 73 of his partners because the stat in itself was not the full story. Um, and the few that I thought of in my head were ones where Steve Wall was at the, the non-striker's end and the batsman called for a single and he got run out. It was his own terrible call. And I thought, I wonder how many of those there are. So I started to do a few. And yeah, just went down that rabbit hole. <laughs> and I thought, I, I got about halfway and I thought, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, what a cool video to put out there. You know, that's definitely not something you see very often. And I thought, I'll, I'll just go all the way and get as many as I could. I, I didn't quite get them all because there's some footage which is just impossible to get. Um, like, Australia's tour of India in 1986 or seven. It's just impossible. But I got most of them, or 95% of them. But the intention was to show that he wasn't the culprit for the runouts. So but little did I know, a certain king of spin was waiting at home, drinking his uh, own brand gin. And he got on it, and then it just went nuts. And, then yeah, everyone thought I was this massive Steve War hater, and I still can't shake the tag. <laughs> People think I really hate him, <laughs> and I've got this vendetta against him. It's it's like what? And then yeah, all the news agencies picked up on it, so I had like a twenty four hours of fame thing. But uh, that was just crazy. But uh, still, no one actually or not. Some people looked at the video and actually went to each run out and saw how many he actually wasn't responsible for. And it turned out that I was right. The video did justify my initial thoughts that he wasn't responsible for burning all his teammates like everyone initially thought. Um, and, and just finally, um, what, what do you do when you're not uh, putting all of cricket's history onto YouTube? Um, well, I'm sitting in my guitar studio right now, um, and that's what I uh, uh, mostly do, play guitar and teach guitar, um, and uh, travel the world on cruise ships with my band. <laughs> so that sucks, but um, yeah, that's what I actually do most of the time is play guitar and uh, teach it and play it around Australia and around the, the world on ships, which is tons of fun. Awesome. Um, well, thanks, Rob. So, thanks so much for joining us. I mean this sincerely. I think you do a public service for all cricket fans. Genuinely, this is stuff that no one would ever see if you didn't put it up there and maintain the channel. It has been fantastic, and particularly during lockdown. Thanks so much. It is my absolute pleasure. I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. Cheers, Rob. Cheers, good to meet you.